So let's say you have um, like a Remo Rototom or a Timbali or something like that. It's a single-sided drum head. I'll just draw it sort of two-dimensional. Um, say this is the, uh, that's the drum, the, the shell of the drum, and this is the drum head. Uh, so you're looking at the drum head from the side, okay? And then let's mic up this drum head with, say, you know, standard, standard microphone there. You strike the drum head with a drum stick and start it, start it resonating. And the initial strike of the drum set pushes the head down away from the microphone. So the first thing that the microphone sees is the drum head moving away from it, which is a, you know, a negative amplitude. So this is, this is a positive direction, this is the negative direction. Now, let's say we want to double mic the drum. We want to mic the top and the bottom of the drum. We're going to use the exact same brand and model of microphone, and we're going to use uh, the exact same mic preamp. So everything is the set to the same gain, has the same um, frequency response. Okay, now we've got another mic on the bottom of the drum set. Now, when this um, stick strikes the head again, its initial amplitude is being pushed towards the bottom mic. So electrically, since electricity actually moves near light speed, according to your recorder, it doesn't care that there's, uh, there's, there's, no, there's, no matter where you position the two mics, it won't perceive a difference in time due to the speed of sound it will or due to due to um, the speed of electricity you can use like a 500 foot mic cable here and a five foot mic cable there electrically they're essentially the same um, I mean obviously there's cable capacitance and all that stuff but in terms of the speed in which electricity travels through the mic cable it's essentially the same you don't have to worry about that difference so what you're getting with this um, bottom microphone at the initial strike of the uh, drumstick is a membrane moving towards this microphone. So it's moving away from the top mic towards the bottom mic. So the bottom mic sees a positive amplitude, okay? So this is okay. So this is what the, uh, I'm a little backwards here, but this is what the um, top mic is seeing, or sorry, this is what the bottom mic is seeing. And then the top mic, yeah, I should have drawn this backwards. The top mic, is seeing that. So let's uh, let me show you sort of the difference in tonality between uh, this sine wave that starts with a positive amplitude versus a sine wave that starts with a negative amplitude. And I can do that back in Pro Tools just by um, creating a duplicate of this track. And um, let's see, I'm just going to solo that guy and then. We're going to use um, Audio Suite Invert, and this is just a quick Audio Suite plugin that will invert the polarity of that sine wave. So let's, let's blow up these tracks a little bit, just so we can see them a little bit better. And uh, so now you can see that uh, the duplicate is uh, in exactly the same in the x-axis, but 180 degrees reversed in the y-axis. So just here's how the regular sine wave sounds, right? and here's how the inverted sine wave sounds. It's exactly the same. You can't perceive the difference, but if, uh, I think my, hold on, my solo mode is wrong here. Um, how do I do this? Solo latch. Um, if I play these together, there's no sound. They perfectly, they perfectly cancel each other because they are perfectly out of phase. So if um, our little drum example over there, if it's a, uh, a perfect universe, it's in an anechoic chamber and the membrane sounds exactly the same on both sides and the microphones are 100% identical and the entire single path's identical, those two mics would essentially cancel 100%. Reality obviously is a lot more complicated than that. But this is um, sort of an illustration of what um, of what uh, polarity is. So just the, the physical inversion of a signal is, um, is polarity.